Hello and welcome back to another um, How to Level Up Fast got a Paladin Edition today. So yeah, um, what's the first thing we talk about? Funny thing, I was playing as Hunter and I managed to win a game in a pretty interesting way that I knew it was a snake trap because if, obviously if you attack with a minion to the face you'd always know it's a snake trap if it doesn't trigger. So um, I was actually able to, I was, my health was very low and I was able to use Curl Apothecary after triggering the uh, and actually benefiting off the snake trap, which is a pretty interesting thing to do actually. This is a pretty cool card, Cult of Uh There's a few cards you're noticing now that are sort of really coming to the full. Like, for instance, one thing is interesting is like Nerubian Prophet, often you see an arena, don't you now? I mean, it's a pretty good card actually. A 4-4 four, four for, for often is, is one, you know, between zero and two. Man, that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, so there's, so there's lots of uh, kind of uh, interesting things. Uh, uh, brand Kodo combo is quite an interesting one. Uh, if you're getting a little bit uh, bogged down with the amount of minions that the opponent's got board. Obviously with Paladin you play much slower than... I don't really play Paladin a huge amount, but... I don't know. I mean, I enjoy playing it when I could play a Russian sort of Paladin with, with uh, you know, Blessing of the Kings and... Uh, I think I actually played a uh, Ginny of uh, Zephyr's uh, Paladin actually. Uh, that was quite fun. Um, but yeah, key card against uh, aggro kind of decks is Defender of Argus though. Uh, it can really sort things out. Ideal combo against a large board is Pyromancer Equality. Um, but yeah, there are two Consecrates in there, so you can get some kind of board control. Um, but you do have to play them carefully. You also have to be, you also have to be uh, careful of uh, when to play Sylvanas. You want to play it just basically uh, when they're sort of about one turn before lethal and then you perhaps can get some healing out. Um, in general, uh, yeah, I mean, maybe not so much. Funny enough, it, it does quite well against Warrior. Was, Warrior is an interesting matchup because Warrior is often a matchup where uh, uh, if the game goes long, Warrior does have the advantage. Even though I found that I can actually win with, with Priest. Priest is probably stronger than uh, if you go all the way to the end. Um, but uh, Paladin also pretty strong all the way to the end. That's always been a way that it's been Warrior, Paladin, Priest. The longer the game goes, the more likely, uh, the more victories you'll get with those classes. Uh, classic card is Forbidden Healing. Up to 20 healing, a uh, huge amount of healing. Um, pretty awesome. And of course we've got this guy as well. Both Ragnaroses uh, now. The new Rag uh, Fire and the Light Lord. Uh, very very good to play um yeah it's one of those ones you do have to play in a f mostly empty board or um yeah or ball with it where obviously nothing's injured because you don't want to be healing like a two three for like one you want to be this is always going to be trying to heal, uh, heal the uh, hero so yeah that's pretty useful as well um but yeah obviously any deck with the leads though is going to be a long-term deck um another thing to point out as well is early game all the old peacekeepers, you're not you're not always going to be able to get particularly strong. Uh, it's a three three for three though. Um, so um, if you compare it to say an SI seven or something like that, um, you know you're reducing. So you reduce the attack by two from a, from an opponent's uh, three four to a one four per, uh, perhaps. That's going to be pretty useful. So yeah, that's uh, another good uh, usage of that. Um, but yeah, Pyromancer. Pyromancer is an interesting one to play. It seems like a late game card, and it is kind of a late game card, but because there's such a limited amount of stuff you can do early game, uh, it's possible it's got some utility early game, but not. It really is a kind of like a, uh, you know, have you really got anything else? How much damage are you going to take? You know, you don't want to be, you don't want to be against a rush deck. You have to really think about. It's similar to kind of, it's like you're thinking the opposite of the way that you might have thought about in the old. You know, like before with hunter decks, you want it. You know, you'd say, well, as long as they're five on fifteen health by turn six, um, you should have it. So, I mean, and that's really the thing. You don't want to be on fifteen health by turn six. You want to be on more than fifteen health. Really, really, by turn six, you want to be on twenty to twenty-five health. I would say, uh, yeah, you want to be on about twenty health. Twenty health, I think, is fine. Um, because yeah, you do have the two guardians of kings. Now, guardian of kings are great. Uh, a great cha uh, game changing. You know, it's got the stats to say like um, 
well, a few things, but these, these stats don't they? Pit Law is the one that comes to mind instantly. Pit Fighter? There's a 5 6 neutral card as well. I think that's what it's called. Uh, with a kind of uh, pinky sort of background. Uh, often used in Arena. 5 6, but that's a 5 mana cost with nothing. So for 2 extra mana, you're getting that 6 health res uh, restoration, which is pretty nice. Um, obviously, not out there with some of those big taunts like that 6 8 taunt now. It's pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, Keeper of Alderman. Yeah, you've got, I mean, because you've only got one, you've got to be a little bit more careful with it. Not really. Ideally, of course, it's best used on a 4 12 if you can get it. Um, but yeah, Tyrion obviously can be uh, a great change. This, this deck's pretty strong against Mage and stuff like that. Uh, Mage, because Mage obviously, you know, it's, it's very hard to control. You know, I mean, we're going to control the 1 1 or, you know, freeze a 1 1, not really. So it's it's there's always going to be uh, some interesting things we do with that. But yeah, I mean, it's powered in, so. Yeah, I mean, Lay on Hands also could be quite useful with uh, Pyromancer. A lot of the uh, things can be useful with Pyromancer. Obviously, the three damage with the Consecrate. Um, pretty useful, so that's like, uh, yeah, I mean, three damage, like a buffed up holding over in a way. Um, and it will actually survive if you do that. Humility as well. Uh, yeah, Humility really is, you know, that, that is the early control. I mean, Humility, you could say, if you can get Humilities, I mean, yeah, I'm just thinking about. I mean, long term, the, 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 you know, it gets more powerful. And I always put this card in Nexus Champion Sarai. I don't know why. I just think it's a great card. It can it can change things. I like to have a little bit of, um, you know, it's the same reason that I put the uh, one one, which uh, gets the three cost being a machine deck. If, if you've got something that just just something that gives a random spell, random card, uh, not so much in. There's only some decks like in a rogue I wouldn't do it, but. Um, which is surprising because Rogue actually does do that, but you know, like, um, yeah, there's a lot of good things to do anyway. Uh, yeah, one blessing is a uh, King's True Silver is really the uh, is the early game healing. Um, you get a 4 4 from that. Um, you see, often, and one of the things I, I guess you do have to think about, and I haven't really, I'm, I'm still kind of uh, debating some of these things. Like, if you've got a 4 4, would you, would you humility and then hit it with the True Silver? Sometimes that feels like a better play. Just because if you really want to make sure, if you, if you feel the health is going to go down too fast, that is a, an important consideration. And on that note, I think I will leave it there. So, thanks for watching.